Good evening and welcome to a joint meeting of the Abington Board of Selectmen and Abington School Committee, September 9th, 2013. In a, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to stand and join us in saluting the flag. And I would ask you to remain standing for a moment of silence as we remember the tragic events of September 11th, 2001, and all those who have been affected by that horrific act of ter terrorism in the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Hey, um, First order of business public announcements, Mr. Coyle. Uh, this Thursday, September 12th, the Edmonton High School football team will play its home opener against Canton High. Um, please note the time. It's Thursday at 4 p.m. due to the, the Triple E concerns. Also, uh, if that game wasn't going to be exciting enough at halftime, there will be a special presentation uh, with members of our Tricentennial Committee. Um, we did a great job. We'll be thanked and recognized, and they will in turn present a cer ceremonial key to the new memorial field gate to our Board of Memorial Trustees. Anyway, that's been down there and seen the gate, it's very impressive. The new brick and rod IA Memorial Gate was constructed uh, as a legacy gift to future residents of Edmonton on the occasion of the town's 300th anniversary. Um, on it, a black granite plaque states proudly dedicates in honor and in, in tribute of all those Edmonton residents who bravely served our country to protect our freedoms. So all residents are encouraged to attend at halftime at the four o'clock Scott game. Thank you, Mr. Coyle. Any members of the Board of Selectmen or members of the School Committee have any public announcements? Okay, if not, um, I'd just like to give a little brief summary of what we intend to do this evening. This, this, in my opinion, is probably one of the, is the most important decision I've been involved with in all of while I've been involved. It's something that, that the committee, uh, uh, which was established at the annual town meeting in 2012, the funds were, were um, okayed by town meeting, further went to ballot to form a, a group a school building committee to study the feasibility of the school building needs and the educational needs of the children of our town. Um, since, since that has happened, this committee, and I don't want to steal Richard's thunder, but I'm going to let him speak to that, has done an outstanding job and provided this booklet which has a wealth of information on it, on the, on the, the conditions of our schools, the educational needs of our schools. And um, they've hired a consulting firm, an architectural firm, that has done just a fabulous job. I've attended some of the meetings, certainly not all the ones that, that the uh, subcommittees have done on that. They should certainly be saluted for the time and efforts that you people have put in. But um, I would invite any of the residents of the town, no matter what, which position you might or might not take, to at least look at this because it, it, it certainly is a, uh, it's just a, a lot of good, solid information. So at this point, I, am, I was going to introduce the members of my board in the administration. I, was, I would ask Jeanette to uh, introduce her board after that. And then I wanted to introduce Richard Tesser. And I would turn, he's the chairman of the school building committee, and I would turn the meeting over to him at that point in time. Uh, and he could introduce the presenters and the, or whatever you would like to do. So um, the members of the board of selectmen is Tom Dion, Andy Burbine, Kevin Donovan, Kenny Coyle, and Mike Franey. And members of our administrative team here tonight uh, is Richard LaFond, our uh, manager, town manager, and Dory Jamis, the assistant town manager. So, Jeanette, if you would like to. Yep. Thanks. Kathy Bailey, Paul Haggerty, myself, Jeanette Leary, Mike Karowski, and Ellen Killian, and also here, um, Superintendent Peter Schaefer and our assistant superintendent of business and finance, Felicia Michelle. Thank you. Um, so at this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Richard Tester, Chairman of the School Building Committee. Richard? Yes, please. Good evening. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Richard Tester. I'm the Chairman of the School Building Committee. Um, we've been meeting now for the past year. Uh, over the past year, our goal has been to determine the most educationally appropriate and financially responsible solution to Abington's current and ongoing school building needs. Um, we've met in excess of 30 times over the past 12 months. That's consisted of both meetings, work groups, meetings with the MSBA, uh, conference calls, 
uh, a number of time has been, um, as Mike had indicated, dedicated by the committee, um, which is comprised of uh, 20 individuals. Uh, those are consisting of residents of the town of Abington, uh, school faculty, uh, members of the town's leadership team. Um, and again, we've, we've spent a great deal of time uh, putting forth the uh, proposal that you're going to see this evening. Um, we've been very fortunate to bring on board uh, two fantastic resources to the committee. Uh, the first with us is Mary Mahoney. Uh, Mary's with KBA. Uh, she's our owner's project manager. Um, and as the OPM, Mary oversees uh, both the project management, cost, time, and vendor management, um, including acting as our liaison to the MSBA. Uh, Mary's <coughs> worked in project management for the past 27 years. Her experience includes 12 years working as a project manager and deputy director for the Commonwealth's Division of Capital Asset Management. Uh, in addition to that, she spent 15 years uh, providing owner's project management services to municipalities, including large-scale school construction projects in the towns of Hingham, Duxbury, Whitman, Hanson, Methuen, and Weymouth, most recently. Uh, Scott is our uh, second professional uh, member of the team. Scott's an architect of 25 years experience, specializing in planning and design of educational facilities throughout the U.S. Uh, he's focused primarily on New England for the past 15 years. He's an owner and principal at AI3 Architects, which exclusively focuses their practice on educational facilities. Uh, Scott's been personally involved in the planning and design of local projects such as Whitman Hanson Regional High School, Hingham Middle School, Marshfield High School, and Plymouth North High School. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Scott for him to start the formal portion of the presentation. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to um, present tonight to the school committee and the board of selectmen. Uh, tonight, we're, um, we're presenting a summary of what we call step one of the feasibility study and as, um, as Chairman Tassay mentioned, um, or Rich Tessa mentioned, the, um, for the last 12 months, a number of groups, not just the building committee, but a number of groups have been working with us to, um, to try to formulate this first step of the feasibility study. I um, certainly want to thank all of the building committee members. It takes a big commitment to, um, to continue to follow this process and be available. Um, the entire year, uh, certainly of 2013, has been spent um, with all of those members working hand in hand with us to develop this information. Um, as was mentioned earlier, many hours have been spent uh, meeting, discussing uh, some of the people that are thanked in our report and our analysis are listed here, but certainly there were many others that were involved and sat in on meetings and volunteered their time. Um, we probably have missed a number of them here, but if anybody um, signed in at a meeting, um, we have documentation of that. Over a thousand hours of collective meeting planning and discussion have taken place so far this year. The culmination of this is over 2,500 hours of analysis, investigation, and reporting by the engineering, design, and educational team. Even though tonight um, will be more of a summary, it's important to understand <coughs> that there's a lot of information that will now become public information that will likely be posted at the Library Media Center in town, your, your local library, um, posted here at Town Hall, and made available to the public. And we would encourage, um, just as the members here tonight already have, um, each member of the community to take a look at that information. It's an enormous amount of time invested, and it certainly provides a lot of detail regarding the current status of the facilities, all of the work that went into the educational planning and programming, a look towards the past, and certainly a look into the future and what the town of Abington um, would like to be as an educational facility. Um, there, you will find in the ultimate um, step one evaluation analysis material an educational program, a document that was prepared by the school administration um, that is required to summarize the way education is delivered in the town of Abington and the way it's proposed to be delivered in the future. You'll find a summary of the visioning 
um, on education work that took place in the workshops and the discussion. You'll find building evaluations, structural evaluations, um, heating, ventilation, air conditioning evaluations, hazardous materials reports, um, evaluations on every aspect of the building as well as evaluations on all the sites that were looked at in town, uh, some comparative analysis uh, matrices that compare various options for resolving educational facility needs, cost analysis, options, narratives. There's a lot of information in there. Um, certainly, the, it would take an enormous amount of time to go through all of it. As I mentioned earlier, tonight is just a summary. Um, it took about five hours just to go through um, the information with the building committee, and they were already somewhat familiar with it. So tonight is intended to be a bit of a summary um, for the boards, the committee, and um, also so for public consumption. But there's a lot of information out there. Uh, well, I'll, I'll constantly be referring uh, tonight to the MSBA. The acronym stands for the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Um, the reason the School Building Authority is important is because they may ultimately pay for 55 to 60 percent of any project that is proposed by the town of Abington. Um, they have a specific mission um, because a large part of the money is their money. Um, they want to be fiscally responsible, educationally appropriate, and ensure that whatever solution the town of Abington um, decides to invoke, that it is a long-term solution for the town and that the MSBA also believes in that solution. The authority happens to be um, headed, as you may know, by uh, Treasurer Grossman, straight, State Treasurer Grossman. Um, also, Jack McCarthy is the executive director of that board we, um, and that authority. We mentioned them because ultimately um, you may be seeing their faces as part of any proposed project. I said earlier that this was a summary of step one. It's really important to understand that the town has engaged in a feasibility study and schematic design. And there are three steps to that process. Um, tonight we're just summarizing step one and the building committee is just now prepared to finalize and take the, the, the last step um, in step one. That includes um, the, what the MSBA would call the preliminary design program. And all of these steps, by the way, are defined by the Massachusetts School Building Authority, the MSBA. Um, all of, a lot of the requirements we'll be referring to tonight are defined by them. And all of the criteria that we have to go through in order to satisfy their requirements are part of these three steps. There's actually um, a long list of over a hundred individual items. We've simple, simply summarized them into three steps. Um, the documents, the analysis, all the information we're preparing and have prepared over the last year with the building committee makes up this entire step one. So um, tonight we're meeting, you can see here local actions and approvals um, tonight. Um, we're essentially meeting tonight. The building committee has already um, reviewed all this material and we're reaching out obviously to the school committee and the board of selectmen and uh, summarizing the material for you as well. Um, the, all of this material, um, assuming your support and doing so, will go forward to the MSBA on September 20th. Um, they'll take some time, take a look at all the information, analyze it, um, give us some feedback, give us some commentary, um, some input, and then allow us to proceed to a step two. Um, step two involves more um, evaluation, if you will, of the information that's in the report um, and would occur by the end of this year. You can see here December of 2013. And then there's a final step in the process the town is currently involved in called step three. Um, that's where we actually develop a design solution, a specific building, a specific project um, on a specific site in a lot more detail. And the goal would be um, by the end of next summer to have that phase complete because ultimately um, the project that is supported or put forward by the building committee, um, school committee, board of selectmen would be taken to a um, MSBA project scope and budget uh, meeting and then receive an MSBA final board of directors approval somewhere, somewhere around October of 2014. And then that's an important date because within that 
approve within that time period the time period immediately subsequent to that 120 days immediately subsequent to that msba board of directors vote um, the town is required to get all of the approvals necessary to fund this project so that 120 day period would be the time period where a town meeting and a debt exclusion vote would typically occur on a public school project so that gives you a little bit of a summary of um, this step one that we're talking about tonight and then what's ahead for um, essentially the next year or so so a year almost invested so far and a year ahead of you um, in the current three-step process I'm, I want to keep everything um, I'll certainly leave it up to the board but I want to keep everything um, with your approval informal enough tonight that if as we're moving through this information there is something that you would like to ask you, you fear that you'll forget to ask questions about it we can certainly stop and discuss it more um, what what has the building committee approved and voted thus far um, they essentially approved the submission of all of the step one evaluation and analysis materials to MSBA um, I want to be clear that there's no specific building drawing or design or solution at this point and there's also no specific site design or drawings um, this is a very preliminary stage um, it's essentially for the purpose of looking at options and they have approved that uh, that we take all of this information and move it forward to the MSBA for their review just a little bit of discussion about um, again what's been in, involved in our work so far there was an evaluation of the Frelio Middle School for a lot of um, for a lot of different criteria that entire report will be included and available um, to the public for your consumption etc I know a lot of you already have that information and have been taking a look at it um, I'll summarize by saying the building evaluation on Frolio will say that it's an amazing testament to how long um, 80 years in this case a facility can continue to last if it's taken care of it's sometimes fun to reflect back on everything that's happened in the last 80 years um, there was no color television um, the Spanish Civil War started at the same time the Frolio Middle School was constructed it's it's sometimes you need those kinds of events to mark how long something has been in place and served um, the town of Abington the report will say that all major building systems um, are at the end of their useful life and that includes the report on mechanical electrical plumbing windows roof um, it will explain how that kind of renovation work on a building the age of Frolio uh, will trigger a lot of other requirements including full building code compliance comprehensive accessibility um, handicap accessibility compliance full energy code compliance um, these are important because a large majority of the money that would be required um, to be invested in the Frolio school work to be renovated fall under those categories actually um, it also includes information in the building structural report that talks about the existing structure at Frolio and how the way it's designed you can't just begin reconfiguring it um, the structure it's all dependent on load-bearing walls and you can't just go in and start to make spaces larger without triggering a lot of new structural requirements so it talks about the reason the structure prohibits a lot of pro potential modifications and expansions that um, because the inherent nature of the existing structure does so there's a lot of detail and photographs in the report um, it talks about how classrooms are undersized and expansion of the building is not practical um, talks about the 675 square foot classrooms where um, even a minimally acceptable acceptable classroom size is 850 square feet by today's regulations and standards safety and security um, inadequacies lack of educational program areas um, it'll talk about the limitations of the existing two acre site and certainly a typical site for a middle school um, in this day and time when we have so much auto um, traffic and bus traffic would be much bigger than two acres obviously at the time that the Frolio was constructed um, students probably walked uh, for the most part probably walked to the building um, it'll talk about the inferior educational environment this comes up not only in physical factors like poor ventilation inadequate lighting 
but also as you review the educational program report on the Frolio, it'll talk about a lot of the inadequacies educationally. One of the things that we have to do as part of the, um, the evaluation, and this is a MSBA, a Mass School Building Authority requirement, is we have to look at what it would take to renovate the Frolio in a base repair option. That means if we just took care of kind of the minimal required issues like asbestos removal, handicap accessibility, code compliance, windows, roof, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, and fire protection, and we didn't care about the educational needs, we didn't care about creating any new space or any new flooring, um, any new finishes, we didn't care about reconfiguring the classrooms, anything like that. We just wanted to see what the bare minimum to keep it going would be, again, in code compliance. Does it have anything to do with education? How much would that cost? So you'll see a report um, in the material that is a specific evaluation. It includes a number of spreadsheets and cost estimates targeted at that, and it points out that the cost to do that kind of work at the Frolio would be $10.2 million. Now, the reason MSBA requires this exercise to be done is because they want to point out that there's no MSBA funding because with this kind of approach because they don't believe it resolves your long-term educational and facility needs. But they want to point out that should you decide to sort of do nothing and just address capital needs for the immediate future, the cost would be significant without their support. Obviously, um, what they're attempting to do here is demonstrate why it makes sense and it's physically responsible and educationally responsible to move on to a more permanent solution. Abington High School evaluation, you'll see many of the same things, similarities to Frolio. Obviously, the Abington High School is newer, um, also in very good condition considering its age, very well maintained, but a significant amount of time has passed since its design. Many things have changed in education. Many things have changed about um, the way education is approached, the way buildings are designed. One of the things that I've pointed out previously to the building committee is both the Frolio and the high school are designed so that the main floor is a half floor above the outside grade, grade level. And at the time those were constructed, that was considered a great idea. It was more economical. Um, it made sense for a number of reasons. But it does some things that are unacceptable now, including making all of the building entries um, inaccessible or not accessible uh, from a handicap standpoint. And so it also triggers uh, security challenges. For example, it's highly unusual that you would come into a building and immediately be able to go into a stairwell or into the academic sector or a hallway without having to pass through a control zone. Both of those buildings suffer from that kind of organization and it's detailed um, in the report. Um, some of the same issues um, are identified in the report as being um, problems and challenges at the high school, both educationally and from a, um, a physical plant standpoint. With the high school, we also had to summarize the base repair option. Again, if you don't address any new space or new kinds of educational space or new finishes, um, just do bare minimal capital needs projects. Um, that computed to be 11.9 million um, at the high school. One of the things we had to do is take a look at capacity versus enrollment at all of your facilities. And one of the interesting things that came out early in the evaluation is your facilities that are in the best condition, which would be your elementary schools, are actually significantly overcrowded. 41% uh, overcrowded um, at Beaver Brook, 50% over capacity at Center School. The facilities that are not overcrowded, unfortunately, are the two facilities we're looking at in detail regarding uh, poor conditions or outdated facilities, and those are the Frolio and, and the Abington School. So um, that's all detailed in the report as well. But it did, mean, it did um, sort of suggest to us early on that if any solution could address these poor facilities and at the same time provide space to ease this overcrowding, then certainly it could help you resolve all of your issues from pre-K all the way through 12th grade. 
I said earlier that um, a number of sites were evaluated as part of our work. All of those sites are detailed in the report. You'll see aerial um, images, photographs of those sites showing the boundaries, the restrictions, the constraints. They're all detailed in narrative form as well. Ultimately, that report suggests that no matter what kind of project you're proposing, the high school is probably the best site because it has a significant amount of av available acreage. All the existing utilities are there. Um, it's already cleared and graded. Um, the town already owns it. It's in a fantastic central location. And all of those factors can result in millions of dollars worth of savings in site development cost on a project. So that is all um, detail in the report. Um, I mentioned earlier that the committee was charged with evaluating um, a variety of different options and s solutions. Um, some of those solutions considered and some of those things that we talked about and evaluated was the possibility of a 7-8 middle school, a 6-8 middle school, a 5-8 middle school, um, continuing a 9-12 through 12 high school, renovation, new construction, renovation expansion. Um, we talked about co-located school possibilities and options, and I'm going to explain um, in a couple of minutes what that, what that means. Um, we talked about a co-located 5-8 and 9-12 school, a co-located 6-8 and 9-12 and school, um, co-located 7-8 and 9-12 school. And these were all put in a variety of different options and scenarios, and they ultimately generated um, 14 different options that the committee was taking a detailed look at. One of um, their ultimate responsibilities, the building committee's ultimate responsibilities, was to select the most viable options for continued study and what I was referring to earlier as step two, because one of the things the MSBA requires is that you really narrow your focus on the options you're considering as you move into step two. Um, I said that some of the options that were considered were co-located schools. Um, what is a co-located school? It, is, it really just means two schools located on the same site with two separate entries and identities that share core facilities such as a boiler plant, kitchen, receiving dock, some of the more expensive components of a school, in some cases an auditorium, um, some of the more expensive components of a school that if you co-locate two schools on the same site, you only have to pay to construct those facilities one time. So the MSBA recognizes and a number of towns surrounding you have recognized that there are many advantages of a co-located school, including those lower cost, um, more efficiency in operation, some staffing efficiencies, um, often more educational opportunities as students from one grade level have the opportunity to utilize more advanced facilities that wouldn't typically be available in their schools. It also allows the completion of a single project which often addresses um, overcrowding, educational needs, and facility needs all in a single project. The, um, in honing in on um, options, I said earlier that the committee considered 14 options. In honing in on the options, one of the options that they selected for continued study was the option referred to as option number one. Um, option number one detailed a 5 to 12 co-located middle school high school with pre-K on the existing high school site. Um, that essentially means a 5 to 8 middle school and a 9 to 12 high school as two separate facilities which are joined by the a common core um, and therefore service all of those grade levels. Um, the committee selected it for continued evaluation because it was one of the lowest cost options for a long-term solution. Um, it resolved all of the pre-K to 12 overcrowding in a single project because it created space that allowed the elementary school grade levels to move out of um, the Beaverbrook Elementary School and into an expanded middle school, therefore relieving the overcrowding. And at the same time, it created new facilities for middle school and high school. Um, so it improves the educational environment for all students pre-K to 12 in a single project. 
it maximizes grant reimbursement from MSBA. The MSBA um, has recognized and, and supported in a number of towns this idea of a co-located school because they can achieve so much um, with less investment. Um, it incorporates all of the educational goals and priorities, meaning if you take a look at the educational program and the educational visioning document and a lot of the other work that's done in the report, um, all of the goals, priorities, et cetera, established in there can be addressed um, by option one. And it certainly also preserves open space and community space. We talked um, with the committee about the fact that any proposal um, to build at the high school would seem to suggest that something has to be eliminated or lost. However, in option one, because the proposal is a new school um, replacing the existing school, we have pointed out that in the step two process, evaluating the size, location, and configuration of that new school may result in less area being taken up by the building footprint and more area being made available for play fields, parking, recreation and community space, et cetera. So it has that potential of preserving open space and a community space as well. The other option that the building committee selected for continued study in step two was the concept of renovating and expanding the existing high school um, in its current location for use as that same five to 12 co-located middle high school with pre-K. Um, this is essentially the same option as option one, except that um, it includes the reuse of the existing high school building. It was selected because it has some of the same advantages, potentially, as option was do, one does, although the two in preliminary cost evaluations, which I'm gonna show you in a moment, um, were very similar in cost, essentially the same cost for option one, a new five to 12 co-located middle school and high school versus option 1B, this renovated and expanded high school um, as a five to 12 co-located middle high school with pre-K. The committee also selected for continued study in step two, um, op the option referred to as option number six, which was construct a new five to eight middle school now and then wait until some future date to consider and complete a nine to 12 um, high school. It clearly it completes um, only a middle, uh, a middle school now. And one of the most important things to understand is the town of Abington has been approved for only one project. So this essentially breaks the proposed approach into more than one project and there's a lot of uncertainty with regard to that second project, when it would take <coughs> place, uh, when it would be funded, um, if it would receive any MSBA reimbursement at all because there's no guarantee of that. So in the cost analysis, um, the cost of that option is shown and then the assumption about MSBA uh, reimbursement is also evaluated and assumed that it can't be guaranteed in the future. So the cost analysis incorporates that um, into it. It certainly delays facility and educational needs for grades 9 to 12 um, until some point in the future. It had a higher long-term cost because obviously as you delay um, addressing the 9 to 12 high school, you have inflationary costs and you have the uncertainty that comes with not having MSBA reimbursement. And then ultimately, it had less eligible costs for MSBA reimbursement because it proposes building two separate smaller schools versus one co-located school on the same site, which is considered uh, one project to the MSBA. Um, I said that there was uh, cost analysis of all of the options in the evaluation and report. You will see a series, a lot, a lot of spreadsheets, but you'll see a spreadsheet um, that looks similar to this, and I don't expect anybody to be able to read this. It's just 
an example of how the spreadsheets organize where every single option is evaluated in terms of all of the components of the costs that go into it, all 14. Um, out of that, as I said earlier, out of those 14 options, the building committee selected three options for continued study. Those are option one, the new five to 12 co-located school, schools on the existing high school site, options one B, renovate and expand the high school to create a five to 12 co-located school, and option six, the new five to eight middle school. Um, if when you look at the detailed information on cost, um, it will present you with a total cost of those options of 93.7 million for option one, 96.4 million for option 1B, and then 108 million for option six. The key thing to take a look at in the cost though is the cost to Abington, the town of Abington, because you'll see in the breakdown, which I'm gonna show you in, in more detail in a moment, that the MSBA reimbursement proposed uh, projected reimbursement for each of these options is considered as part of the cost analysis and you can see option one cost to Abington 41.6 million, option 1B cost to Abington 42.7 million. Uh, you can see those um, were two of the lowest cost options of all of the options considered you, so you can see why um, they were certainly selected. Um, option six, um, even though the middle school might, by itself uh, might be less expensive to build initially, if you consider the fact that ultimately the high school would have to be addressed, um, you get to the total cost with inflation, um, assuming the high school piece is out some point in the future, of 108 million, and then a cost to Abington of 83.2 million. Again, because there is no guarantee of reimbursement for that second project, and this particular option assumes two projects, a second project in the future. What is included in the cost? Um, the cost that I'm referring to and that is presented in the report and analysis is a total project cost, meaning everything associated with building the project, not just the construction cost of the building and the construction cost of the site, but all of the soft costs, like the cost for architectural and engineering fees, for owner's project management fees, for furniture and equipment. And so you'll see when you look at the detail of all of those costs that it's broken out into the line items that the MSBA um, recognizes as being required for evaluation. Now, in the very beginning, I said that there's no specific building design and there's no specific site design. So how can we possibly know what the cost of this project is? Well, the way the MSBA <coughs> wants us to project these costs at this kind of preliminary phase is look at their database on similar projects um, and, sim and similar towns of similar size in terms of the scope and magnitude and utilize their database along with ours to project what the cost would be on your project um, assuming that it has similar characteristics to some of the other towns. So for example, when we project the cost, the new construction cost of the building is based on the square footage of the building. Um, and that's one of the line items, new construction square footage. Option one is clearly all new construction. So you see 243, 494, that's the square feet projected for a five to 12 co-located middle school, high school building. Um, we have to note the number of pupils it serves. In this case, also the number of pre-K pupils it serves and then we note the baseline reimbursement or the minimum reimbursement that would be provided uh, by MSBA. This is based on this year's numbers. They adjust those slightly each year, but they um, ask us to utilize current numbers for the purposes of projecting these preliminary costs. Um, so based on their average cost per square foot database, we get a new construction cost, um, we also have to project furniture and equipment costs that will go into the building. We do this based on the MSBA's guideline for furniture and equipment on a per pupil basis. Um, 
the architectural and engineering fees as well as the owner's project manager fees. Again, based on averages uh, from similar projects, MSBA database. Um, the miscellaneous project costs, um, a lot of things go into this category, legal fees, topographical surveys, geotechnical analysis. Um, we'll be providing the building committee, um, the school committee, and the board of selectmen with examples of costs um, that go into this category. But at this point in time, obviously, we're projecting preliminary costs, so there wouldn't be a detailed breakdown. I will say that one of the reasons we're explaining all these costs is because as you begin to talk about the costs that make up a total project over the next year, um, it's very important to know what those line items are. But there will be, continue to be refinement, obviously, of all of these numbers and more detail built into all of these numbers as we move forward over the next year because it's not until almost a year from now, um, August of 2014, that I pointed out earlier, MSBA will finally be meeting the entire board of directors to decide the final costs on this project. And between now and then, they will want to have some participation in the detail that makes up this, these numbers. Um, and they'll want you to become very familiar with all of these numbers. So even though they're projected preliminarily so that you can take a look at the order of magnitude of, co of costs, I want to reinforce the fact that the MSBA recognize the, recognizes these and you should recognize these as preliminary projections that will continue to be refined as we move through um, the next year or so of this project. Um, they require you to carry an owner's contingency and a construction contingency that will be evaluated by them. These are based on some of their, on some of their standards. Um, they will ultimately be compiling the part of the project that they will provide reimbursement on, the part of the project that will be the responsibility of the town of Abington. And there will always be discussion about portions of the project that are not eligible for reimbursement. Um, we know in general what those are. Just looking at other projects, for example, the MSBA places a cap on the amount of site costs they'll pay for in a project, not because they don't think you need site work or play fields or some of those amenities, but just because their policy is to limit their participation in those particular areas. So we'll need to consider those areas. We've done so here with some averaging um, site costs. We're assuming approximately $3.5 million of the site costs will not be eligible. Again, not because we would be proposing anything unusual as part of this project, but we know typically on other similar projects, um, they exceed the site costs and therefore a portion of the site costs have to become designated as ineligible. And we wanna make sure that we're relatively conservative and assume that upfront as part of any kind of preliminary analysis. There'll also be portions of the furniture and equipment and technology that the building will likely need that will exceed the portions that would be eligible from MSBA. This occurs on um, almost all projects, certainly all the projects that we're familiar with. And so we wanna be conservative and make sure because in this early analysis, we don't yet know, obviously, exactly which furniture and equipment and technology will go into the building. We may use, reuse a lot of your existing furniture, equipment, and technology. In fact, we will be re re proposing to reuse anything that still has a useful life. However, we want to make sure that you at least have the equivalent of other similar towns as we move through some preliminary cost projections on your project. Um, so there's some assumptions that that much, the 4.9 million in the case of option one, would therefore be deemed um, not eligible costs by the MSBA. And there's an adjustment to reflect then how much they participate in and how much the town of Abington would be participating in. And that's how the total cost that I showed you earlier is projected for every single option. And you'll, you'll see that in the analysis, you'll see that in the reports, it's the way all of the costs for the options are generated. In the case of option number six, as I indicated earlier, it involves two projects. That's why you see a column here and also a column here. Um, each one of those represents individual projects. 
here are the middle school, here are the high school. So if you want to take a look at what just the cost for the middle school is, you can see it right here. You can see just the cost for the high school right here. And then you can see the projections on what MSBA will participate in and what the town of Abington would be responsible for. I know it's a lot of information to digest. Um, the purpose of our summary tonight is just to try to get you familiar enough that if you want to dive into the details of the information, um, you know where that information is. So what is the Board of Selectmen and School, Com School Committee being asked to approve tonight? Um, essentially endorse the same approval that was provided by the uh, School Building Committee, which is the approval of taking all of this material um, with no commitment necessarily to a specific project, but all of this material, submitting it to the MSBA. They have a number of staff, a number of specialists who do this all day long. They'll have their input. They'll want to take a look at it and offer their opinion on the paths that are the options that were considered, um, the options that are being proposed for further study. But this is a first step in giving us the authority um, to turn that information over to them. And then also the narrowing of the list of options for continued study. As I mentioned, um, three options were recommended by the building committee for further study. I should point out that the other thing that the um, MSBA will require us to do is add sort of a fourth option, although it's not a legitimate option in terms of how you would proceed, but they will ask us to continue to evaluate that base repair option. So you consistently and always throughout the feasibility and schematic stage through all three steps have that number and it continues to be refined so that you know what, what those base capital repairs would be in terms of the cost of the town with no reimbursement versus executing a full-blown comprehensive address all the educational needs, all the physical facility needs option would be. Um, again, the school committee and the board um, tonight is not being asked to approve any specific building drawings or design. We're not to that point in step one or any specific site drawings or design. Um, the reason we mention this is because it can seem confusing that you would make any kind of approval at all if, um, if we don't have a building design or a site design. But MSBA considers this a very slow and thoughtful process where they want all of the preliminary information, early preliminary information shared with the boards and committees um, very early on and then they want to take that information and make sure they believe in it before we even proceed to any kind of design. And when we do move to that preliminary design phase, that step two, the exciting part about that is that's when we really go out in the community and start to talk about where the play field's going to be, how many play fields are there going to be, what's the best layout for the building, um, parking, auto, bus circulation. We start to talk about the physical production of some kind of building solution and site solution. But um, I don't want anybody to think that process has in any way been neglected. It's just that this is a, very, a much slower kind of thoughtful process where we haven't even gotten to that point yet. So that's what um, is being presented in the material tonight. That's the documentation that we would propose be put forward to, um, to MSBA. And that's a summary of where we are. Uh, I will um, be happy to answer any questions or turn the meeting back over to the board. Or, um, Rich? Rich? We can open up for questions. Uh, if I could, please. The two questions I have in mind is on the proposals, assuming we you know, approve it tonight to set forth the, the three options that's being recommended. Does the MSPA then in turn look at that and designate one of those options to which they would fund? How, how does that process unfold? The MSBA will look at all the options that we put forth. Uh, we're actually going to submit our entire uh, package, which includes 14 uh, potential options. We will highlight those three options plus the base renovation um, as our preferred alternatives. Um, the MSBA may say that 
they are in favor of one of those. Uh, the MSBA very well may come back and say, we don't like any of the options that you put forth, and you need to continue to explore another alternative option. So uh, just because we put something forth to the MSBA does not necessarily mean that they're going to automatically rubber stamp it, per se. Uh, they still have a tremendous amount of work that they do and due diligence on their end <coughs> to ensure that the, al the preferred alternatives we're presenting are, in fact, in the best interest of the town and the MSBA. Okay, thank you. The other question would be, I know at one point there was talk at the MSBA that they were going to, and I don't know whether they've gotten away from this or not, in terms of funding, if they, were, if they approve a community for funding, at one point they were talking about giving the community the entire amount of the grant so that in terms of a cash flow basis, you'd have that money to invest. Have they, are they still doing that or is that? No, I'll, I'll ask Scott to speak to that. What they have done, and if this doesn't answer your question, cer certainly rephrase it, and we'll, between Mary and I, we'll try to, but what they have done as part of their new policy is a system they call pay-as-you-go, meaning in the past, before they revamped the entire school building authority, if a town wanted to do a project of this size, you had to borrow all of the money and you didn't get paid back uh, for about 20 years, sometimes longer. Some of them went 26, 27 years. The process now is that once you start moving along with this project, every single month you will submit all of your bills to them. You'll pay the bills, but then you'll submit all of your bills to them, and then they will immediately, within the following month, reimburse you for their portion of the cost so that you don't ever have to reach out and be extended beyond um, for the full cost of the project essentially. Now they do require you to bond or to approve and bond the full project because they want to be assured that you have the ability to borrow and pay for the entire project but every single month that you expend funds um, again once you're moving through this process um, they reimburse you their portion of it. Okay, and lastly, if I could, in terms of the debt service, I know to your point, in the past, that was problematic in, in some view, but in terms of when you get to the stage where you permanently borrow, you know, after the construction and moving forward, is the money there on a similar basis to make the debt payments? I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I understand the question. In other words, okay. Oh, you've already been Mary Mahoney, I'm with Knife Bag and the owner's project manager. Uh, we've met with Leo Provost to talk about um, taxpayer impact and also for uh, debt exclusion, ballot, and funding sources. And the way the MSBA program works, as Scott talked about, is that you have to bond the entire project, um, and that's the uh, debt exclusion ballot that you'll issue. Um, the state will reimburse you based on your monthly request for reimbursement based on the grant. Um, you won't know the final value of your grant until the end of the project because through each monthly payment, MSBA audits the payments that are made on the project to make sure that you're staying within the scope and the budget of the original approval of the project. Um, a final phase of the project, uh, when you are at substantial completion, is that they will also review all change orders that have been issued for the project to make sure that those are maintaining the scope and the budget of the project. Um, at the conclusion of that audit, they will release the payments on change orders and they will release the payments on your retainages. You have a 5% retainage throughout the project. At that time, you will know your final number for your debt service. Okay. Very good. Thanks very much. Thank you. Sure. So, in so many words, you're only paying debt service on Abington's portion of the bill, not the total amount. Great, thanks. Do we have any other questions? Uh, yeah, I just, um, one of the, the questions I had was on enrollment. I, it looked like this was the enrollment as of now. Does the state require you to look forward they in do. a community and basically say, you know, 
it could be built out another 10 or 20% enrollment will increase 10, 15%? They do. They do. The, How have you addressed it here now? The, the state uh, requires us to look at birth rates. Um, they also have a small factor that they include, um, assuming because they see a uh, return of students from um, either private schools or, or um, in some cases tech schools uh, once a new school is built. So they look at uh, birth rates to project future enrollments. Uh, and then there's a small percentage uh, addition added, um, assuming that there'll be some return of students if, in fact, Abington builds new school buildings. Is that submitted with this phase? Or? That is. That was actually uh, prior to us even moving forward with the feasibility study. Um, we needed to present stuff to the MSBA for them to review um, and come back to us with potential projected enrollments. Uh, so the MSBA actually is involved in the uh, enrollment study. Right. The other question I had when I listened to the presentation, I think it was right before Labor Day, was with a new building today, what advantages are there with security and access that we may not see in existing structures? Oh, this uh, significant. Um, I mean, one of the one of the concerns that um, that comes to light uh, just immediately when you think of many of our facilities is. Um, you are, you're buzzed in, which is fantastic, but once you're buzzed in, you're buzzed into either a hallway, a stairwell, um, and anyone that is, has any intentions doing anything unscrupulous certainly isn't gonna stand by um, waiting once they get buzzed in. They're gonna make a beeline down a hall or, or down a stairwell. Um, that in itself is extremely concerning. Um, I mean, that's just one that comes to light. If you enter any other schools now, um, you enter into a secured area um, and there's no way to, to leave that security area um, or you're greeted by someone at a security desk for instance or, or you um, enter into a central office, uh, but you don't enter from the outside into um, kind of a general uh, population area. Um, you know, it would also include opportunities, um, you know, cameras, uh, various different resources. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of you know, the town and, and our uh, maintenance staff have all done a very good job of retrofitting uh, things to ensure that, that our student population is safe, uh, but none of that can compare to, um, obviously, a new school building. Yeah, if you can give some additional examples. I, I just would also add that the security of a school facility has changed enormously in the last 10 years. Forget about the last 80 or 60 years, but in the last 10 years. And um, the buildings have become very sophisticated in terms of the way they protect students from potential intruders, students and staff from potential intruders. But they've also come, become very sophisticated in the way they protect students from other students as bullying and other activities have become problematic. We've found that in the schools that introduce um, surveillance systems throughout the schools, and every single school we've been involved in, in the five, last five years has had um, video surveillance and monitoring both inside and outside the building. And one of the, the, one of the biggest and most positive feedbacks we get from the faculty and staff is that the students are handling themselves much better as a result of knowing that their activities are, mo are monitored. And so it becomes not only a safer environment in terms of protecting the school from the outside world, but a safer environment in protecting the students um, from each other. The, um, the opportunity to um, run surveillance on the exterior of the buildings has resulted in less vandalism and less problems. Um, it's not a cure-all, but certainly many districts have realized um, the cost savings, behavioral benefits, um, and security benefits that come as a result of, of a new modern facility. And those, those systems are smart, and they, um, they, most all of the ones we're introducing now even have the ability, if you wish, to track every single student and every single staff member moving in and out of the building. So if at any point in time there's an emergency, um, they know in an instant exactly where everybody is through their, um, through their, car, their card, their security card, um, their access card, et cetera. So the systems are, are quite sophisticated. 
And my, and my last question is just uh, for either of you. In watching the presentation tonight, you had your timelines. And I guess I, I sit here and I wonder, is there any opportunity that those timelines could be accelerated at all? Are we kind of on the state's timeline that you submitted? You get it back? Because, you know, when I look at it, I think the go to step three was until August of 2014. Correct. I was just trying to think that is it possible to bring that into a budget cycle, you know, uh, late spring or so? I would say it would be highly unlikely. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, because we're dealing with the MSBA um, and, and we need to adhere to their, their timelines, um, that, that would be, I would say, extremely unlikely, unfortunately. Thank you. Yes. Kenny? Um, Maybe I'm not knowledgeable on this, but it seems to me, I, I understand, you know, I've heard of bringing a junior high into a high school, you know, the different grades together and up to five and six, but it just seemed weird to me that pre-K would be added to the mix. I mean, I know there's overcrowding in pre-K. Is that the only reason that is? No. And the other question is, now would that be, I, I picture this as being, uh, five through twelve or six through twelve on one side, and the high school on the other. W would pre-K be its own unit, or would they go in with the younger kids or the high school kids? Uh, it, it, no, it's a very good question. Um, and, and actually, the the overcrowding, um, while it presents a potential solution to the overcrowding um, at the elementary level, um, that was not the catalyst uh, in which we chose to include pre-K. Um, by having the pre-K um, at the at the high school level. Uh, it creates a tremendous amount of opportunity for early, early education, um, training for the high school juniors and seniors. Um, it gives them, you know, real world hands on experience. Um, a benefit of, of doing it in addition to having it as part of the curriculum is certainly it relieves some overcrowding, uh, but that was not the, the primary reason for doing it. Um, it was to be able to include it in the curriculum uh, from an educational perspective. Um, when you talk about it, 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 consider it really as a school within a school. So there would be a uh, five through eight school, if you will, a nine through 12 school. Um, they would all, both have their own separate entrances, um, both have their own um, operating times. Um, in some cases, towns have elected to separate them horizontally. Um, in other cases, they have elected to uh, separate them vertically, um, meaning that either you could have essentially, you know, a school on the left-hand side, a school on the right-hand side, or some towns have elected to say, okay, the first floor will be you know, five through eight, the second floor will be nine through 12. Um, the the pre-K would have its own entrance um, and, and really be almost a school unto itself, um, but it would need to be in proximity to the high school because that would be where the early education uh, classes would be taking place. A couple more questions. Um, I'm not sure how much this has been thought out in, in terms of the construction. Would they, would it be a separate area that they build a new school the, the, the new schools at or would it be pot renovate the high school or would it be behind it or well there's actually so we, we have uh, we have two options um, of the of the three that are being presented um, and one is a, a completely new construction um, and then um, option 1b is an ad rental um, so the ad rental would utilize the existing high school infrastructure um, and then it would be an addition on top of that. Um, a new would be a completely new, um, new building, obviously on the high school site. So what would most likely happen would be that school would be being built presumably behind the high school um, on the lower level. Um, once that school is fully constructed and ready for occupancy, we would then transition the students over to the new building and then the old building would be torn down and potentially turned back into to playing fields or usable space. Um, the reason that, you know, option one as opposed to one B, so the completely new construction, um, we feel is probably a more ideal solution is there's no interruption to the students. Whenever you're doing an ad reno, um, it adds additional time to the project. Uh, you're trying to uh, work around students, not work around them per se in the classroom, but you, know, you need to shift students. There needs to be uh, work keeping the students in mind because you're working in a facility that is currently housing students. Um, all of those concerns are alleviated if you do brand new construction. Um, I guess, and I've talked about this at other meetings not having to do with 
a school project, but traffic concerns have they been taken in, factored in at all because uh, I mean, they would be, be adding more trips up that road uh, absolutely uh, and that is that is a question that was brought up um, at the last school building committee meeting as well um, we have not done a, a traffic study as of yet that takes place in um, in the second phase um, one of the things that we did discuss is you would have uh, alternate start times so understanding that that right now um, with the current 9 through 12 population you know, there's, there's a lot of traffic that's taking place going in and out of there. Um, if we were to add the five through eight, uh, the elementary, or excuse me, the middle and high school would have separate start times, um, separate end times, so that would potentially alleviate some of the additional traffic flow, uh, but we'd do a full, full blown traffic study in phase two. And I guess my last question, it's more, it's more of a statement, I think, it, it's, I, I've seen the three options that, that the group is, is you know, prefer, prefer, uh, preference. Um, it seems like the last option, option six, or is that what they call it? It seems like it's just kind of thrown in there so that it just seems very expensive and not realistic so that other, you know, the other two are more likely to, to pass. Do you understand it's, what I'm I, I, I could certainly see uh, how that could be perceived. Um, option six is included because the MSBA approved us to look at um, a number of alternative options to address the town school building needs. Uh, one of those options was a new middle school, uh, a new or, or potentially renovated middle school. Um, the Renovating the Frolio is completely off the table. Um, the footprint doesn't allow it. Um, the building is 80 years old. Uh, the cost associated with, with even bringing it up to current day standards um, is, is completely uh, unreasonable. Um, so for that reason, the only option to address uh, just a middle school would be to construct a completely new middle school. Um, one of the things that the MSBA does require is, is when you're looking at projects, you need to be looking at not just, not looking at it as an individual project. You need to look at it as to how does it address the entire town school building needs. Um, and when you look at option six, the reason why you see the addition of the high school there is the committee recognizes that by just building a middle school, we do not address the town's school building needs. Uh, we'll still have overcrowding at the elementary level. We still have a high school that's 50 years old, which um, with the high school and the other schools in, in the town, uh, we do have the distinct, uh, I won't call it fortune, uh, but I guess we have the distinction of having the oldest schools uh, in the South Shore um, and very much uh, possibly on, on the entire, uh, you know, Eastern Massachusetts. Um, so the town, the town needs to do something to address the school building needs, um, and certainly option six uh, looks like a, an expensive alternative. The reason it's included is because it was one of the approved options by the MSBA, um, but we don't certainly consider it to be the most viable option given uh, the other options that are on the table. Thank you. Mr. Franny. Um, just, just one thing. This is liable to spur, most likely should spur some questions from residents and stuff. Um, and again, I salute the efforts that the, the, your your hired architects or firm has done in, in your committee. Uh, is this available for them? And what if they have questions? How would they go about having them answered? Uh, absolutely. The uh, an overwhelming amount of the information is available already on the uh, Abington School Building Committee's website. Uh, that website is ASBC. Dot us. Um, there's also a, um, a questions, uh, question and answer link on there, uh, and they can also submit questions directly on the website. Um, that's really the most efficient way to get an answer. Uh, that way, depending upon what the answer is, we can farm it out to the appropriate party, whether it's sure. um, Scott or, or Mary, uh, myself, or Peter, potentially. So that's the most efficient way. Um, as Scott has indicated, um, once we uh, approve and authorize the OPM to submit the feasibility study uh, materials to the MSBA, um, these packages will be made available um, in local town meeting spaces. So uh, there'll be one made available at the town library. Um, we'd have one made available here um, for public consumption so that they can um, view that as okay. well. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. And this may be a little bit early to ask this question, but if, if I'm a resident, I'm going through the package, and there's a lot of numbers here. To me, as a taxpayer, like the way these numbers are here, whether you went 1 or 1B, what does it mean to a homeowner 
as far as the tax bill at this time? Like, could you project what that might be? Yeah, I'll, I'll, Do you want I'll give you a shot. As you know, it, it is preliminary. Uh, and, but the estimates that, that we have from the treasurer, and if you're approximating about a $94, $95 million project uh, with about 55% of that uh, reimbursed by the state, you're probably looking at about a $670 increase um, in your taxes annually. However, over a period of a few years, that's mitigated by the falling debt on uh, other projects, Griffin's Dairy, the Town Hall Library project, um, and the high school windows, etc. That's going to mitigate that by approximately close to three hundred dollars, about two hundred seventy dollars. So over a period of time, you're probably looking at about a four hundred dollar plus increase in your taxes uh, when you net out some of the expiring debt versus the new debt for this project. A question, just to tag on to Paul's um, question, on um, what. Um, value of a house was that based on? That was based upon an, an assessment of $300,000. Uh, would you, uh, I guess from this point, you need uh, approval from the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee, so if you'd like to make a recommendation. Yes, the, the vote that the school building committee is looking for is to approve and authorize the owner's project manager to submit the feasibility study related materials to the MSBA for its consideration. Uh, that's the, the first vote that we're looking for, and we do need a roll call vote. It has to be a roll call vote. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Burbine. Second. Second by Mr. Donovan. Any further discussion? If not, Tom? Yes. Andy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, and the chair votes yes. And we'll do the same. I'd like to say before we get going with our vote is that we I've been, you know, privileged to be involved with this for a long time in these meetings and we looked at these options for a long, long time. And you know, option one, one B, it really when we take a, a larger look at the families in Abington and our students, we need to help and solve all the issues. Not just the high school, not just the parolio. It's the overcrowding and you know, we made the comment at another meeting recently that We'd love to lower class sizes. We have no place to put a new teacher. We need to help all of our children. And by doing that one project, co-locating, it helps everyone in Abington. So that's it. So we'd like to have a motion on our side. A motion. Paul, I'll second. 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 Mike, roll call. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Rich. Very good. Thank you. Good, good job. job. Thank you. Nice job, everybody. Um, at this time, I'd like to have a brief recess. All right? Everybody all right with that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Thank you. We're on recess.
Trying to help. Is that obvious? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to call the meeting back into order. Um, at this minute, at this, we have action discussion items. Number one is approval of minutes for July 16, 2012. So Open moved. session. I have a motion by Mr. Donovan. Second. Seconded by Mr. Burbine. Any further discussion? Mr. Dion? I'd like to make a correction on page 7. This appointment to Plymouth County Advisory Board. Mr. Poyle was appointed. I think I, think I was. I was I've been going to meet. I haven't seen you. <laughs> <laughs> you were the you were the phantom there, right? <laughs> you are correct. Okay, you make that correction. I don't, I don't What's that, Dory? What's the correction? What was it? Page seven on July twelfth. Uh huh. I believe. It was kind of an army volunteer thing that I was appointed to the Plymouth County mm -hmm. Advisory Board. Okay. Not Kenny. That you were appointed, okay. Oh, okay. You were a brave sure. man, Mr. <laughs> Dion. But you admitted that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any further changes? If not, I'll accept the motion as amended. So moved. Motion by Mr. Burbine, seconded by Mr. Donovan. All in favor, all Aye. opposed, it's unanimous. July 10th, 2012, executive session. <laughs> Will we approve the motion by Mr. Not to be released until all that is Correct. A motion by Mr. Burbine. Second. Second by Mr. Coyle. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I wasn't okay. uh, 401. And uh, August 5th, 2013, open session. Will we approve? A motion by Mr. Donovan. I'm on the second because this is probably the best run meeting we've had in quite a long time. I, I, I heard, I heard. <laughs> 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 actually, that's actually, that's actually probably one of the shots. Yeah, Wait a minute, all these motions. Congratulate the I have to make a ruling all these motions are out of order. <laughs> um, seconded by Mr. Coyle. Any further discussion? No, all in all favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and I abstain, I wasn't there. So it'll be 401. Thank you. Uh, item two is the appointment of Sage Committee. Ginny Brown, Ginny Brown, 1001 Linda Street. Would you like to stand up and introduce yourself if you don't mind? Would you, just so the people at home. <laughs> I am Jenny Brown, I'm at 101 Linda Street. Seeking application to the Sage Committee? Yes. Where's Linda Street? Off the green. Oh, okay. Did you know what it is? I almost certainly did. Everybody in the table know what it is? I definitely know. Doris, Linda, Rice, Olson, Clyde. There you go. Okay. Did you mention Martin? I did. I make a motion to appoint Jenny Brown to the Sage. Any questions for Jenny? Not a motion by Mr. Burbine? Second. Second by Mr. Dunnerman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's a tough crew, though. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'm fine. You're not that out. <laughs> Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for stepping up. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Item three is reappointment of zoning member to the Navy, uh, Navy AS Station Board of Appeals, Jim Haney. Um, Rick. Uh, Hi. Could you just note that I recuse myself? Certainly. We have a series of, obviously we have a series of emails back and forth and Jim, uh, I think Jim questioned whether, how long his appointment went. Yes, this would be a three year appointment. So Correct. it would, it, as of March. So this appointment tonight would be good through March of 2015. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, yes, sir. And this question, this appointment comes from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Right? Correct. Outside. Exactly. Now, is there a member from all three towns? Will a member reach the zoning board? Yes. That's right. So we actually don't have to make an appointment. He's already the zoning. Reappointment. So it's reappointment. But it's because of the zoning. But they make the appointment. No. We make the appointment? Right. Okay. So but I just it's not published. Oh. Yeah, I know. Okay, I get, I get where you're going. Um, I'll accept a motion. Motion, so motion. by Mr. Coyle. Seconded by Mr. Burbine. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's uh, unanimous. 4 0 1. Thank you. Uh, 
Item four is discussion of the fall 2013 special town meeting. Rick? Mr. Chairman, I would, uh, after just, uh, conversing with the town clerk and the moderator uh, and department heads, I'm going to propose a date of November 4th, which is the first Monday in November. Um, furthermore, if the board was so inclined, um, currently we have already put the word out to our department heads of the, uh, the possible date and asked for input regarding possible items. I would ask that the board set a date for the closing of the warrant as early as September 20th. That way you could accept it at your next meeting on the 23rd. And uh, departments are already aware of this possibility. Um, do we close the warrant or open the warrant? Well, you'd open it tonight, close it on the 20th, and you could uh, deal with it on the 23rd. That would get, obviously give plenty of time for the finance committee, okay, et cetera, to do what they have to do in advance of November 4th. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to call a special town meeting for Monday, November 4th at 7 p.m. at Abingdon High School. The warrant to open this evening and close on September 20th. Thank you, Kevin. I haven't heard Kevin's motion. I need a second. Second, second by Mr. Burbine. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That's unanimous. Item five is the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, as you can see from your material, I did provide a written update, and I'm going to just point out a couple items from that. Uh, first, uh, with regard to the town's uh, landfill situation, I do have a, a draft. Uh, from Mr. Wright, uh, Stephen Wright from Kleinfelder, um, regarding the status of the uh, of the uh, uh, that project, we had a site meeting on August 15th. Uh, a number of members of the Board of Health uh, were uh, nice enough to attend that, so they could get themselves updated. As you know, there's some newer people there. Uh, there's uh, the update from Mr. Wright. I've seen a draft, and he's finalizing it. It's fairly brief. Uh, but goes through the various options uh, that might be available to the town and a little bit of the history. A lot of you are familiar with a lot of those pieces, uh, but I thought it was helpful if all of the players can be brought up to speed and be on the same page going forward. You should probably have that as early as the end of the week even. So um, uh, tomorrow night, the Memorial Arch, the Notice of Intent Continued Hearing with the Conservation Commission is, uh, is uh, in front of the CONCOM. Hopefully following that we'll have an order of conditions or at least a draft order of conditions uh, that we can use for finalizing the procurement requirements. Uh, moving down my list, uh, the Strawberry Valley Golf Course is in the, the uh, uh, process. Uh, we're in the process of finalizing RFP. Their uh, management contract expires December of 2013. Uh, that's a uh, project, uh, not a project, so to speak, but a procurement uh, that we're obviously being very careful with uh, due to some of the historic issues there. Um, the budget process, I had a nice meeting with the Finance Committee last week, and we, we discussed some general parameters for the process this year. Uh, the general timeline that we discussed was having our uh, pro budget proposals due by Thanksgiving. I like round round dates that by Thanksgiving and that gives uh, me and the staff and the, uh, the ability to put together um, a reasonably good document by Christmas um, and some have some budget proposal early in the calendar year that we can then all go about deliberating after that so we that's <laughs> yes yeah, so and uh, that's all I'm going to draw your attention to on the general update. If anybody has any questions, please let me know either now after the meeting via email, etc. Like one quick question yes. on, the, on the landfill, Rick. Is, is yes. he going to come in front of us at some point in the future? To, to I haven't asked him to, but I'm sure he'd be more than happy to. I think that was one of the things when he was here eight or okay. ten months ago. He was going to come back and give okay. us a presentation just to okay. us. Yeah, that, that and that's yeah, fine. That's a good idea for you. Um, I'd be happy to. We can schedule something. And yet the other thing I was wondering is. I think this is great, this synopsis of what's going on. Is there any way you can post that on the website? You know, Wendy, maybe town manager on a... There isn't page. a chance I can, but I'll bet you, Dory. <laughs> 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 yes, we, we could do that. Sure. Um, Ken, I want to thank you. Uh, I'm not sure uh, we haven't got a report on the year, basically. And one of the, uh, there was a lot of stuff going on up there. I'm going to press the lead and check them off for a meeting in the future. Yeah, if, if, I, if I might... Uh, um, Town manager and myself attended a meeting uh, with the Tri Town today. Um, there, it was it was a very good meeting. It was very productive. 
talked about a lot of different issues and one of the things that we're going to be is discussing the new proposal um, they have not received the information themselves on what that new proposal is and I think it was October 7th Kevin um, they were going to receive it so sometime after the uh, this October 7th we'll have that information so by all means yes I think we should have them and make a proposal to the board I don't know if you want to add anything to that Rick no, I think, I mean, today's meeting was spe specifically regarding the, the infrastructure, water, sewer issues um, that, that uh, would accompany the development. Uh, and um, as the chairman mentioned, uh, we do intend on meeting after the uh, Starwood uh, makes their proposal on the 7th, um, just to make sure the three communities are at least conversing on potential impact. So, you know at that point hopefully we'll have some more information I don't know I think the uh, October 7th is a morning meeting I don't know how many people can actually physically get there obviously I'll be there and I know there may be some other town officials who can be there um, so how that presentation and proposal is then uh, um, uh, translated to the various communities through their boards and committees is we'll have to figure out the best way to approach that after the, the 7th the, the next meeting after that date yeah, put that I, on it, the agenda. Yeah, sure. I think that would be a good idea. Uh, where, where is that October seventh meeting? Right? It's going to base? be right up at the air base, right? I think they're still determining how they're going to uh, put that together in terms of space, depending on what they believe may be the attendance. So, thanks. Okay. Any further discussion? Any further questions from the town manager? Public comment. Okay. If not. Um, I'll entertain a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing strategy pertaining to the following collective bargaining units, police, I, International Brotherhood of Police Officers, Highway, Sewer Park, and Recreation, uh, the Managers Association, Union, Clerical Union, and the Library Union. So moved. Mr. Motion by Mr. Donovan. And not to return to open Not to session. return to executive session. A second. Not, not to return to open session, I'm sorry. Second by Mr. Burbine. Tom? Yes. Andy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Andy? Yes. The chair votes yes. Thank you very much for attending. Have a good evening.